Hi, my name is Dave Lax, and today we're going to explore a brief history of learning theories over the past 95 years. We're going to look briefly at the behaviorist and social cognitive theories, and then spend a little more time with an in-depth view at the constructivist theory in all of its complexities. When we think about thinking or the learning process, we call this metacognition. The Merriam-Webster Online Dictionary from 1977 defines metacognition as the awareness or analysis of one's own learning or thinking process. The way we view learning has shifted. Nobel laureate Herbert Simon stated that the meaning of knowing has shifted from being able to remember and repeat information to being able to find and use it. This is from Simon, 1996. Let's look at two examples of what this means. I know this one. I've memorized it. Let me see. Um, Alabama is Montgomery. Alaska is Juneau. Arizona is Phoenix. Arkansas is Little Rock. California is Sacramento. Colorado is Denver. Connecticut's Hartford. Delaware is Dover. And Florida is Tallahassee. I mean, I can go on and all, but... Well, it's the capital's Tallahassee, I know that. Well, nothing really. My assignment was to memorize a list of states and their capitals. Um, I got 100%. I got an A on this test. I mean, I really know my states. But I don't really know much more. Um, I guess I'll have to wait till my teacher fills my head with more information or makes me memorize more facts. Actually, I don't know that, um, but I know where to look. Um, I learned in my class how to research for reliable information. Now, I've got my computer here. Let me see. All right, Google search, reliable. Oh, okay. The capital is Tallahassee. Wow, this is interesting. According to the Tallahassee Information and Tourism Guide on the web, which is the copyright of 2008. Tallahassee has been the capital of Florida since 1824 and is a charming provincial city with mature oak trees often lining the streets. Tallahassee is located on the northern tip of Florida. Uh, its capital also contains the spreading campus of Florida State University, which is known as FSU, housing for more than 25,000 students, as well as the Tallahassee Popular Florida Agricultural and Merchant University, known as FAU. And it goes on and on. There's so much information in here. Wow, this really ties into my nature studies on indigenous oak trees of North America. I'll have to do some more research. I can't wait to learn more. Behaviorism. Let's talk about behaviorism theory in education. According to the book, How People Learn, 2008, Behaviorists conceptualize learning as a process of forming connections between stimuli and response. Motivation to learn was assumed to be driven primarily by drives such as hunger and the availability of external forces such as rewards and punishments. Thorndike and Skinner were one of the major investigators into these theories. Behaviorism, with its emphasis on experimental methods, focuses on variables we can observe, measure and manipulate, and avoids whatever is subjective, internal, and unavailable. For instance, we're talking about mental things. In the experimental method, the standard procedure is to manipulate one variable and then measure all its effects on another. All this boils down to a theory of personality that says that one's environment causes one's behavior. Let's look at two examples of this theory of behaviorism. Hmm. Ah, peach. I love a peach. Mm. Oh, there's that sound again. Mm, peaches. Oh, this is good. Oh. Mm. Mm. Love these peaches. Mmm, peaches. Mmm. Mm. Where's the peach? 
Hmm. Well, look at this mic over here. Oh, man. That's like electricity. All right. What was that sound anyway? Let me adjust this mic again. Oh. I got to move this mic here. Let me see. All right. Every time I do that, I hear that weird sound. I don't know. Anyway. Oh, oh, oh. I didn't even get shocked on that one, but I reacted. Social Cognitive Theory. According to the authors of Multimedia for Learning 2001, cognitive psychology places an emphasis on unobservable constructs such as the mind, memory, attitudes, motivation, thinking, reflection, and other presumed internal processes. One of the constructs of this theory is that new information is stored in short-term memory until it is actually used, organized, and then at which time it shifts into long-term memory. The authors further explain how new knowledge may be so surprising that people interpret the new information in a way that is congruous with existing knowledge or beliefs. This is called assimilation. But this new knowledge may become so clear and incontrovertible that eventually existing knowledge must also change, which is called accommodation. This has to happen to be acceptable in light of the new knowledge. Example, if it ever rains, this new roof system that I put in is so foolproof, it will never leak. I'm telling you that this is the best system. It's, it can't make a mistake. It's perfect. It is dry. I will remain dry. I am certain of this. Assimilation. Okay, something must have gone wrong here with my foolproof system because I am wet. It must be the manufactured defect in the material. It's the only way I can explain it. Bandura suggested that environment causes behavior. True. But behavior causes environmental change as well. He labeled this concept reciprocal determinism. The world and a person's behavior causes each other. Later, he went on a step further. He began to look at personality as an interaction among three things, the environment, behavior, and the person's psychological processes. Bandura is considered the father of the cognitivist movement. Of the hundreds of studies Bandura was responsible for, one group stands above all the rest. It's the Bobo doll studies. He made a film of one of his students, a young woman, essentially beating up a Bobo doll. The woman punched the clown, shouting, Sakaru! She kicked it, sat on it, hit it with a little hammer, and so on, shouting various aggressive phrases. Bandura showed his film to groups of kindergartners who, as you might expect, kicked it, hit it with the little hammers, and so on. In other words, they imitated the young lady in the film and quite precisely did what she did. And while this may not seem extraordinary to the average parent, teacher, or casual observer of children, it didn't fit so well with the standard behavioristic learning theory of the time. He called the phenomenon observational learning or modeling, and his theory is usually called social learning theory. Bandura did a large number of variations on the study. When Bandura was challenged about this experiment, people were saying this this doll is made to kick and hit and punch. What's the big deal? He did something very interesting. He had the children enter the playroom one day after observing these films, and he had a real clown in the room. And what do you think happened? The children attacked the clown with the hammers. They were kicking it, shouting Sakaru, and basically beat up the clown. 